a thought that comes to my mind is about storms. What is a storm? Act of what? Act of God. Act of God. Well, it's a storm. It's God makes storms. It can make trouble. So, uh, uh, violence. violence. That's, the, that's what I was looking for. The word violence. Storms can be violent. Uh, there's a Greek word called lite, which doesn't matter whether I say that or not, but what that was is I was reading about that in, in, in Acts 27. Uh, it, it means a sudden burst of air and water. And uh, they would come up from nowhere. And, and hopefully we can look into that. Go ahead, David. You have to say. But storms, that's, that's what's on my mind. And, and I got to thinking back, this year has been a wet, wet, stormy season for us. We go all the way back, you know, it's raining every day, every day, wind blowing, it's raining. And the rivers were rising. And even in places, there was hurricanes and then tornadoes, just devastating. Uh, I heard on the news the other day, y'all probably heard it about a child that, I believe it was in Texas. Uh, maybe wrong there, but anyway, a tree fell on a trailer, a mobile home, mobile, mobile home type trailer, and uh, killed a human, a small human. Storms can be violent. Storms can be devastating. Storms can be bad, but storms can be good. So I want us to look and think about different kinds of storms. Does a storm usually last a long time? Usually, they don't, you know, maybe, a, a, now I know it rains every day, but I'm going by actually bad lightning storm and, and real bad winds. They usually blow through. And then what happens? Oh. Calm comes. The sun comes out. The, and, and when the sun comes out, you know that the storm is over. Now let's look at these storms and some of these storms that, that people were in in the Bible. Now there's a lot of them. And I'm going to try to touch on three or four, maybe five of them. But what what storm comes to your mind whenever I say the Bible teaches about storms? No. Well, I know it had to be the first one. Didn't it? Let's turn back to Genesis chapter 6. Uh, Christy, you want to read? Yes, sir. Six, uh, read six through uh, eleven through six, chapter eleven through seventeen. And let's talk about the storm here, or this raging of, of wind and weather, bad. Genesis six eleven through seventeen. Yes. Yeah. Okay. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth, and lo, and behold, it was corrupt. For all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make thee an ark of gopher wood. Rooms shalt thou make in the ark, and shalt pitch it within and without. And this, the fashion, and this is the fashion which thou shalt make of it. The length of the ark shall be three hundred cubits, and the breadth of it fifty cubits, and the height of it thirty cubits. A window shalt thou make to the ark, and in a cubit shalt thou finish it above. And the door of the ark shalt thou set in the side thereof, with lower, second, and third stories shalt thou make it. And behold, I, even I, do bring a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh, wherein is the breath of life from under the heaven, and everything that is in the earth shall die. That's reading there about a storm, a bad, bad storm. This is the worst, one of the worst storms that has ever happened. Do you agree? The worst. The worst. The worst. And I got called with Jess about fish. I said, well, where's fish? She said, they stayed in the water. They didn't need to be on. I said, you're right. I forgot about that. I couldn't taste in my mind how the fish was going. And then I realized they got plenty of water. So. But 
I was thinking about this, and I got thinking about Brother David and I. We we uh we was in a bad storm one time. You remember that bad storm? I think it was coming out of Patterson, wasn't there? Somewhere in there, there. They hung up. We were on the. Uh, that road when you go to Hoboken, Trudy road. Hoboken and turn left and it comes up on 301. Yeah, well, anyway, we, we were in, we were, it came a dark, dark cloud and then it started raining and it, we were on motorcycles now, that's what, what I want to tell you. We were on motorcycles and foolishly we kept going instead of pulling off. Well, it got worse and worse and the only thing I could see was a little bit of the white line on, and everything else was blowing to me, and I couldn't stop because the car would, would run over you. They couldn't see us, I knew. So we just had to keep going, and finally come to a store, and we'd go and stop there for a while, and it went over. This is not one of those storms that last a few minutes. This one lasted a long time. And Brother David and I, we said, well, it's slacked off maybe some, let's go for it. And we got all the way to Lake Rock, and it rained all the way to Lake Rock, and then the sun came out. But we went through a storm. Well, we didn't go through no storm like Noah went through a storm. The Bible says in verse 5 of this chapter that there was wickedness of man in the earth. They were corrupt. And, and, they, uh, and it, says that in verse, it says the earth was also corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. Verse 8. Said now, Noah found grace in God's eyes. God was destroy, fixing to destroy man. It said that he repented that he had made man on this earth. But Noah and his sons and his daughters and his wife, God made a covenant. A covenant is a promise. That's what a covenant is. And God made a covenant to Noah and his household. So he did exactly what God told him to do. He built an ark. God told him to build an ark. He told him to respect what, what he wanted to do to each point to do. And Noah, Noah and his sons, and, and our son, the daughters and wife and all, were all working on this thing. But he was 600 years old when this all this happened. But Noah found grace in God's eyes and Noah was spared from the storm. It was going to rain how many days? Forty days and forty nights. And on the seventh day of, after they had gotten on the ark, after they were, him and his household got on the ark, and God shut the door, seven days later, it comes a torrential rain. And I assume the wind with it. But God had told him to do something and he did it and it was a deliverance from him, for him and his household. Do you imagine Noah out there preaching and saying, get on the ship with me, get on the ark with me. And then people just laughed at him. They were violence out there. They were corrupt people. They did not care. They thought he was a foolish man what they thought in their mind. Go ahead, Jim. It had never rained before. So no, it was a mist that had come out of the ground. They had never seen rain. That's right. You, you're right. Now, I would have probably had some doubts, would you? If you had never seen it coming out of the sky, water just flooding. I'm not going to say that I wouldn't have denied it. But there was God's people, a lot of God's people outside the, uh, the ark. Don't you imagine they were beating on that door? Okay, when they got a foot high, let's go. I'm ready to go. It's too late. I think Brother Joshua told me here one time about a too late doctrine. Well, it was too late for them to get in. So the ark was, God had flooded it, and there was a bad storm. That's one type of storm that we we'll, we'll look at. But we go through all kinds of storms, and Noah certainly went through the storm. You know, God creates storms, but He also calms the storms. Turn to uh, David, read 107 and verse 29 of Psalms. Think about God 
calm storm. Now, he also creates these storms, but he calm. Start with verse 23, Brother David. Psalm 107, 23, and read through 29, and think about that 29th verse there that, that's told. Psalm 107, 23. They go down to the sea in ships that do business in great waters. These see the works of the Lord and his works and his wonders in the deep. For he commandeth and raiseth the stormy wind which lifteth up the waves thereof. They mount up to the heaven. They go down again in, uh, to the depths. Their soul is melted because of the trouble. They reel to and fro <laughs> And stagger like a drunken man and are at their wits end. Okay. That 29th verse says what? I'm sorry. I, I read it through 27. Then they cry unto the Lord in their troubles and he bringeth them out of their distresses. He <laughs> maketh the storm a calm so that the waves thereof are still. It says he maketh the waves a calm. With God calm bad weather? Does God create bad weather? You think about it in that same chapter, read, read uh, 1, 8, and 15, Brother David. And think about God is a good God and we need to praise and honor Him. And 107, uh, 107 chapter, verse 1, 8, and 15. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness, for the wonderful works to the children of men. For he satisfieth the longing soul, and filleth the hungry soul with goodness, such as sit in darkness, such as sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, being bound in affliction and iron, because they rebelled against the word, words of God, and contempted the counsel of the Most High. Therefore he brought down their heart with labor. They fell down, and there was none to help. Uh, we should give praise and honor to the goodness of God. He creates the storm, and He also calms the storm. Verse, we, verse 15, let me, I didn't read all Verse 15 and 31, read both of them. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for His goodness and for His wonderful works to the children of men. Verse 31? Yeah. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for His goodness and for His wonderful work to the children of men. Over and over and over, He is teaching in this one chapter about how good God is to us and we need to praise and honor Him. He creates storms in our lives to test our faith sometimes. And then He also uh, stops storms. And you can say, peace, 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 be still. So he can just calm them, or he can make it a, a storm. The disciples themselves were in storm. Turn to Matthew chapter 14. If you look, take a note, we've got a lot of different uh, verses I know I'm going to. Then. But I want to kind of emphasize about that even because they were disciples and apostles that were with Jesus, the storms didn't go away. As a matter of fact, the Bible says it rains on the just and the unjust. The Bible tells us that there's much trouble. In Acts 14, 22, it says there's much tribulation to enter the kingdom. You've got to go through some storms to enter the kingdom of God. You've got to go through some persecution. Much tribulation. Tribulation means trouble. And so... The disciples themselves, they got they were fishermen basically, and Jesus had called them to follow him. And these disciples, that's what a disciple is, is a follower of Christ. Okay? Turn to Matthew chapter 14 and Christian, you want to read uh, 14, 22 through 33, it's kind of lengthy reading, but I want you to notice here the storms that come upon even the disciples. And straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into the ship 
and to go before him unto the other side, while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. When the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I. Be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. Okay, can you talk about that? Think about these storm, this storm here now. They were fishermen, and they had rode out many storms. I, I assume as, they, as their business, their livelihood was to fish, and fishermen get caught out sometimes in storms. And they were in a storm, but this was a real bad storm, and Jesus had told them to go out with their boat. Did they obey? Yes. Yeah. They did do it, but and they went out. And then verse 27, when Jesus started walking out there, now these waters were high, I assume. And I wrote out some big storms in one of them service. And here they are, and they were scared. And I would be scared too. I'd be afraid. I mean, you out there in a small boat, not even a ship, I won't even call it a ship, just a fishing boat. They didn't have outboard motors like we did to hurry up and crank up and go back or trunk with motors or all they had, I assume, was those oars and they were trying to get back to shore and it didn't seem like they were making any progress at all. And then they see Jesus come and they got scared because they thought he was a spirit, which is a ghost. And he told them in verse 27. What did he say in verse 27 about be of good cheer? Be of good cheer, for he is a die. Was he right there in the storm with them? And they didn't even realize. God has been in our lives through storms, and we didn't even realize. I've been through some storms. You've been through some storms. Every one of us have gone through storms in our lives. But God is still right with us. Is God for you? Sure he is. Is he against you? Sometimes he's against us. When we walk contrary, he calls the storms to come in our life to make sure that we know that he is the almighty God and the all-powerful God and the one that can calm the seas or make the storms. So those disciples, he told them to be of good cheer. Now keep that in mind, be of good cheer. Because we're going to go to another scripture that says, be of good cheer. Turn over to uh, Acts 27. Now Noah went through some storms and his family. The disciples went through storms and Jesus come and calmed it. And in Acts chapter 27, Janice, how about read, uh, read Acts 27 verse, I don't really know what it was. About 22, I guess, 23. This is whenever, let me go explain in case we miss the scriptures on it. Paul was to get on a ship and they were, uh, they were 200 something prisoners on this ship. And Paul was a prisoner on a ship and he was going to sail around to different places. And Paul told them in this chapter, don't sail now because the winter months are coming and the, the winds and the rains are really bad at this time. Well, I know they are because it's the North Atlantic and I rode the North Atlantic out. And it does get rough in the North Atlantic, especially around Italy and all around there. And Paul was warning them, don't sail right now. Just wait a while. Now why is he telling them that? I don't know. But he told them, don't go. Yeah. They did go. And they started going and they come to different cities. And then the, water, the storm come and start reading Genesis about that. And now I exhort you to be of good cheer. He, he tells them to be happy. That's why he said over in Matthew 14. Be of good cheer. Okay. For there shall be no loss of any man's life among you, but of the ship. For there stood by me this night the angel of God, 
whose I am and whom I serve, saying, Fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar, and lo, God hath given thee all them that sail with thee. Wherefore, <coughs> sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God, that it shall be even as it was told me. Be of good cheer. Keep good. Howbeit, we must be cast upon a certain island. But when the fourteenth night was come, and as we were driven up and down in Adria, about midnight, the shipmen deemed that they drew near to some country, and sounded and found it twenty fathoms. And when they had gone a little further, they sounded again and found it fifteen fathoms. Then fearing lest we should have fallen upon the rocks, they cast four anchors <coughs> out of the stern for the day. And as the shipmen were about to flee out of the ship, when they had let down the boat into the sea, under color as though they would, they would have cast anchors out of the foreship, Paul said to the centurion and to the soldiers, Except these abide in the ship, ye cannot be saved. Well, stop right there. What did he say there? They were fixing, they were anchored out, and they were fixing the crash that the anchors come off. And they were going to crash, and they were going to jump overboard and try to swim. And Paul said, stay with the ship, and you'll be saved. You'll be delivered. Did the ship have a wreck? Yes, it did. It went ahead and crashed, but he said that nobody was killed. Why? Because they stayed with the ship. They did what they're supposed to in the storm. Now, they were throwing things over, uh, and I, I say baggage they had on there. They were trying to throw it over to keep the sink uh, uh, afloat. But even that, they wound up crashing and they were delivered or saved. And he told them, y'all be happy. Everything's going to be okay. Be of good cheer. God's going to take care of you. You know, we have troubled times in our lives. And I thought about that in John 14. It says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in me. You believe in God also. Let not your heart be troubled. Are we troubled sometimes? Are we in stormy times in our life? When I had sickness, I know when my mama died, I had a storm. I had a bad storm. David went through a storm with his mama. When you have a loved one that's sick and dies, that's a storm in your life. But thank God we got him. And he says, don't let your heart be troubled. I'm going to still help you. I'm going to be right there with you. You're going to go through some tribulation times in your life. So, now, old age. How in the world is old age going to be going through a storm? Well, the older we get, and this, some of us are young in here, and, but trust me, if you live long enough, you'll get old. And he tells us over in Ecclesiastes about your eyes going out, and your ears going out, and, and you, you hear it going out and your eyes going out and different parts of your body wearing out. And those are storms in our lives. But you know what? God said that He's going to take care of those that have holy hair. White hair, in other words. David gives us an example that God wouldn't leave him. God, he said, when I was young, you know, I've never seen the righteous but yet now I'm old, but I, I've never seen the righteous be able to breathe. God still takes care of you even when you're old and you're wore out. So we got a good God. We need to praise Him for what one of us said there. We need to be happy in the Lord. Be cheered inside. There's Jesus right here with you. You know, sometimes we have tough times going through these storms and we don't understand them and I'm not going to try to go to all these different scriptures, but one I want to look at is Matthew 7, 24. Uh, James, how about read Matthew 7, 24 and 25. Every one of us applies to this verse. They didn't just point out certain ones. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him into, unto the wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. 
All right? Did they all, did the storms come to both of them? One of them, one of them said that they were on the rock. Where's the rock? Jesus. Jesus is that rock. Storms going to come to all of them, both of them. Want to build a house on the world or the sand, the sun of uh, the rains came. Want to build a house on the rock, still the rains came. But where would you want to be? On the rock. We need to look to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, and trust in Him because He is your rock of salvation. He is, he is the one. Now, perilous times come in our lives. Give you an example. In Isaiah uh, 43, I believe it is, it teaches about perilous. Troubled times are going to come in your life. When you walk through the fire, He's going to be there with you. When you go through the rough waters, He says, I'll be with you. Over and over and over. There's different characters in here that we won't go to, but all of them need to know that storms are coming in their lives. In 2 Timothy, over there, chapter 3, it says, the last days, perilous times are going to come. Those storms are going to come. Are those storms here today? They are here today, aren't they? We, now, I know it was applied to them back in the old days, years ago and he was telling them that perilous times were going to come and Jerusalem was basically going to be destroyed and it was and they had perilous times well America today is going through some stormy times perilous times are here and perilous times are going to stay here and we all going to suffer those trials and temptations and tribulations in our lives but God says be of good cheer I'm right there with you so let's think about these storms. There's a lot more to go through, but I won't. But, but, but perilous times are here, but God is greater as He is in you, and He'll be right there with you. Okay? When we go through storms, uh, sometimes we see God more clearly than, than we, when the storm was. Testing right? your faith, eh? And uh, storms are sometimes good for us. When they went through the storm and saw Jesus walking on the water, and nobody that was on the bank saw that. Nobody saw Jesus walking on the water except the apostles who were in that ship. Mm -hmm. They had just left 5,000 people that had been fed. And, a miracle. Mm -hmm. and, and they saw nothing. But those that were in the storm saw a miracle. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Fire. The storm came and, and they were cast into the fire, but they saw the Son of God. Yep. Son of God walked with them in the fire and delivered them. And uh, but sometimes when storms come and we, we hate to see them, but sometimes they bring us closer to God and we're able to see God more clearly. That's a good, good thought. That's why I read, uh, I try to say about Isaiah 43, fire. That's what Chad read mentioned, went to fire. And it wasn't no fake fire. This is a real fire. Seven times they, they made it really souped it up a little bit. But the storms are going to come. But keep in mind uh, seek first the kingdom and you'll enter the kingdom of God. First, seek God first and, and you'll enter the kingdom. So then you're